how waste cooking oil can be used to run your diesel engine and going green. You're tuned in to the ABS-CBN News Channel, powered by HTC, quietly brilliant. Here's an idea for a great mobile browsing experience on stunning live... Welcome back. It's that day of the week again when we explore and appreciate green ideas and inventions. This is Going Green. Now, how much diesel fuel do you consume each week? And how much do you spend each week for your fuel expenses? I'm betting it's a lot. Now, if you want to cut down on your fuel expenses, you can actually use recycled vegetable cooking oil to power your cars. You curious? Watch this. So what does this 4x4 have in common with a plate of french fries? It's oil, not engine oil. We're talking vegetable oil. And this car runs on it. We'll tell you all about it on this week's Going Green. Diesel fuel is a petroleum-based fuel used to power engines. Compared to gasoline, diesel fuel provides better energy efficiency and mileage. But did you know that diesel exhaust emissions contain over 40 different types of toxic substances such as arsenic and formaldehyde? According to the American Lung Association, particulate matter from diesel emissions causes over 15,000 premature deaths a year. So we took a little trip to Makati and visited a backyard filtration plant that gives an alternative to diesel fuel, waste cooking oil. My name is Chips Guevara. That's my nickname. Okay. Uh, so what's your business all about, Chips? Okay, um, I convert the diesel engines to run and use cooking oil. I install the conversion kit, mm -hmm. uh, and then after we install the conversion kit, you can use used cooking oil uh, as a fuel in place of diesel. It sounds like a crazy idea. How does it all work? <laughs> this is my shop, right. and um, I have a... These are my two jeepneys mm -hmm. uh, that are running on vegetable oil. Okay. Um, and this is really what my, one of my advocacies mm -hmm. are for this uh, business. Chips collects waste cooking oil from the community. Using his machine, he filters the oil, making it usable for car engines. Check out his mountain of oil drums just waiting to be recycled. We actually get a donation of used cooking oil from uh, a coal power plant okay. in uh, Mauban, Quezon. Um, yeah, so they, because, you know, they, they uh, emit a lot of carbon. Uh -huh. Uh, this is one of their ways of trying to give paying, back. Paying it back. Paying it back. Paying it yeah. back. I like that concept. Yeah, I like so that they, concept. So there. we don't, uh, most people sell their used cooking oil, yeah. but they donate it. The next step would be to filter the waste cooking oil and get rid of all the impurities in it, like the water content and all the other tasty additives. There's a lot of water content in used cooking oil, mm -hmm. and it's very bad for your injection pump. Right. And along with the... Um, but oil and water don't mix, do they? Uh, they don't. Yeah, but uh, it's hard to separate them. All right, okay. Uh, and along with the water comes toyo, suka, uh -huh, uh -huh, sugar. Uh -huh. Other good stuff, other <laughs> yeah. good stuff, all right. Yeah, lots of healthy stuff. Okay. <laughs> in a nutshell, liters and liters of waste cooking oil will then go into this powerful machine equipped with bag or sock filters that will trap the impurities. Okay, these are bag filters. Okay. And for example, this bag filter is uh, it's about a 2 micron pore size. That's, mm. a, that's the size of the hole. So if the particle is less than two microns, it still gets through. <laughs> so this is where we store our clean oil. Okay. Um, this is where we store our dirty oil. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of pump the uh, dirty oil up to this tank. And then by gravity, that's, that's how we do our filtration. That's my secret spot. Oh, okay. <laughs> the goal is to get the cleanest dirty oil. Is that even possible? So we asked Chip to show us how. So how do you uh, filter it out? Um, well, yeah, that's part of my secret. Secret, huh? Well, we did a little bit of snooping around the internet, and here's what we got. A simple filtration process that could be similar to Chip's trade secret behind that orange claw. Step one, heat the waste cooking oil. This will allow the particles to settle. Step two, using a pump, suck out the cooking oil and transport it into a drum. Of course, the semi-purified oil must pass through the filter bag. Step three, put the semi-purified oil into a centrifuge for the last phase of filtration. Dirty contaminated oil goes to one tank and clean, usable oil goes into another. 
Sounds complicated? Well, there is a much simpler way. It's quite simple. They just leave the, they leave the oil for three weeks under the sun, and then everything, everything will separate. So. All right, yeah, so, so all the muck goes right, to the right, bottom. Right. Chips tells us not all types of cooking oil can be used. Two important things to remember would be the oil's calorific value and viscosity. So we call, call them uh, ones with higher heating value mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. calorific value. Mm -hmm. So it's the amount of energy that's contained in one liter of, right. of oil. So some would be higher than others. So uh, if it's coconut or palm oil, it's actually at parity with diesel. Okay. So you'll get the same mileage, you'll get the same horsepower. The two critical things are uh, the viscosity and then the flash point. Uh -huh. The viscosity is uh, how, how fluid it is. Mm -hmm. So um, the higher the viscosity, the slower it flows through the, the fuel line. And um, uh, if it's very viscous, uh, it will have a hard time getting through the filter. Uh -huh. You know, it's, uh, and you won't get that same atomization. Right. Right, the injectors have to spray, spray it very it. finely right. for it to have complete combustion. Uh -huh. Second is the, the flash point. The flash point temperature is the temperature at which it will combust. Uh -huh. So at room temperature, oil will not we'll combust. Not right. uh, but you need to raise the temperature for it to start uh, burning. Uh -huh. uh, but those two things will sort of work together because the hotter the oil is, the, the thinner it gets. Yes, yeah? yes, exactly. So how would an engine customized for the consumption of waste okay, cooking so oil look I like? Mean, at first look, to me, an engine is an engine. But what, what would essentially make this uh, be able to run on vegetable oil? Uh, well, we installed uh, several heat exchangers. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of them. This is the most visible. Uh, that's actually a fuel filter okay. and a heat exchanger at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, underneath, yeah, this is, this is it. This is an electrical heater mm -hmm. uh, that's thermostatically controlled. So right. this is our thermostat over here. Okay. Uh, so basically what it means is uh, depending on the temperature, uh, the electrical heater will switch on and off mm -hmm. um, automatically. So, so that the temperature will always with, be within a certain range. Okay. Right. And that's what's critical here in the system. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In my crude understanding, is for the oil needs to be in a chamber where it, it has to be very hot for it to actually combust, yes? Yes, or? yeah. Because um, oil, uh, cooking oils don't burn at normal, uh -huh. at ambient temperature. Right. So, you know, you can throw a match into a, a, a jar Ooh, of cooking oil. It's not which is burn. another plus, really, for it. But, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Isn't it? But so it's hard, it's it's hard very to easy, burn. It's very easy to store, but it's harder to burn. So, yeah. Okay, so I mean, so you've got just, it's basically a whole bunch of, um, Heaters that preheat the oil is that is that the is that the yes. the, the system yes. that's going on here? Yeah. Okay, and then yeah. after the oil is hot and warm, or in this case hot, it has to be pretty hot. Yeah. It just flows through the, the the diesel engine, much the same way that the yeah. diesel yeah. Uh, yeah, fuel. Pretty much. Would. Pretty much. Then let's start it up. Let's hear it run. All right, here we go. Walk us through the process. There's a whole bunch okay. of. Heaters, three heaters, which need to get the oil to a, a, a hot temperature. Yep. And then, so it, it's essentially coming from the fuel tank and passing through all of these lines. Yes. yes. And straight into the combustion chamber. Yeah. To, to the injection pump. To the injection then, uh, pump. And then into the combustion chamber. All right. It just takes a little longer, so right. I just have to heat it longer. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And other other than that, it's pretty much just like any other car. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the. Uh, if you look at the exhaust, it's... I like yeah. that sticker right over there. Amoy frito. Yeah, and then it smells like fried chicken. We even checked out the oil filling station. So yeah. this is this is something you see at the, your, your usual gas station, petrol yes. station. Yeah. But out of this is going to come out oil. Just yeah. Yeah. plain old oil. Yeah. And as you're going to put that straight inside, into your car. Yeah. And it's going to work. And it's going to work, yeah. I, this I got to see you believe. This I got to okay. see you believe. Take it from the boys, it's the same performance for a fraction of the cost, and no cost to the environment at all. So definitely, walang rason kung bakit hindi magpalit yung mga tao sa ano sa waste vegetable oil system. Sulit. What would you say are the pros and cons of using the the waste oil system? Well, for the pros, uh, there's there's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, first of all, we're recycling uh, waste vegetable oil, which uh, would have ended up in the in the drains, mm -hmm. which clog our drains. Uh, when, that's why it you know we have floods. Environmentally, um, 
Um, we, we reduce carbon monoxide, we reduce the particulate matter, which is such a, a huge problem here mm -hmm. in, in Metro Manila. Um, we reduce, uh, we completely eliminate sulfur oxides, we reduce nitrous oxides, and it's completely carbon neutral. In terms of costs, how would you compare the cost of running this system versus running a traditional uh, diesel fuel system? The cost of the conversion kit, uh, that this design that I have right now is uh, for light vehicles. Mm -hmm. So uh, a jeepney or uh, maybe a small SUV or you know some adventure or a rebel mm -hmm. uh, would cost about 35000 uh, That's my price for that. Um, uh, the cost of my fuel is 20 pesos mm -hmm. per liter, okay. and I've maintained that price for, for about three years now. 20 pesos is a far cry from the current 40 plus pesos per liter of diesel we have these days. And if you're thinking diesel engines were not built to run on cooking oil, well, you might want to review your history. First of all, I'd like to mention that um, diesel engines were actually designed to run on vegetable oil. Uh, in fact, Rudolf Diesel, the inventor of the diesel engine, first ran it on peanut oil. Mm -hmm. It's just that petroleum became abundant and very cheap. Uh, so that's why diesel fuel took over you know, and, and vegetable oil went out the door. The best part is that you can always revert back to regular diesel fuel anytime you want, or even mix up diesel fuel and cooking oil in any proportion you like. Now, this technology has also started to catch on. The luxurious Peninsula Manila Hotel, for one, has adopted this green technology as a way of giving back to the environment. Well, I find out from our purchasing that he was buying our the, uh, liters and liters of uh, cooking oil, used uh -huh. cooking oil. And you were curious, ano yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we asked him, what are you going to do with that? And uh -huh. we found out that he is using that to run uh, diesel engines of mm -hmm. uh, the jeepneys, the ordinary mm -hmm. jeepney. Mm -hmm. okay? So we were really, how do I say that, uh, I mean, we were curious. Mm -hmm. okay? So we asked our general manager, Jonathan H. Crook, if he would allow me to try it in one of our vans, uh -huh. our purchasing vans, uh -huh. for instance, okay. to, be ex to be specific. So we, we tried, and he did the modification, mm -hmm. and after a while, it was a very successful uh, CSR project. Engineer Alvarez says, simple math will tell you that using waste cooking oil will not only save the environment, but will also save a lot of cash too. We are uh, saving a lot. Okay? Like for example, we're buying from him 20 pesos per liter of WBO. And can you imagine how much is uh, a diesel fuel now? It's mm -hmm. uh, 48 pesos. Okay? Today, and, maybe yeah. tomorrow, maybe higher tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and if we're going to sell him our uh, used cooking oil for uh, 8 pesos, so that's less, so that's, we can only use 12 pesos per liter of uh -huh. WBO. So okay. that's a very, very good savings. And as most would say, a car that runs on waste cooking oil smells like frying. That's the way they say it. Too much fried food might not always be the best for your health, but it certainly is the best for the environment. So the next time you order, order fried. It might be one of the best ways to go green. Great idea, didn't I tell you? Look up chips at the uh, Alter Energy Systems, all right? The question is, do you guys have the next great green ideas or do you have any out of this world plan to save the planet? Well, let us know. Tell us what you're doing to help save the environment. Send in your pictures and thoughts to ancgoinggreen at gmail.com and get a chance to be featured right here where we are going green. All right, folks, let's find out what's brewing in the newsroom. Gigi joins us live from there. Thanks, Paolo. Here's a quick look at some of the stories we're tracking today. The nuclear crisis in Japan is still our top story. Authorities are considering spraying water and boric acid in an effort to contain radiation from the Fukushima.